This is a 2018, almost exactly the same as the 2019, Chevy Traverse. This was at the Baltimore uh, Auto Show, and this is the one that I rented with the high country trim. I'm gonna go over some pros and cons, interior, exterior, talk about the details, and do a review to try to help you. It's the name of the channel, you know what I mean? You get it? Uh, let's just dive into the pros and cons. Pro, this car comes with badging. Look at that badging. They have these fancy chrome plastic things stuck to the car to let you know. You know what it's got. People will not only know what you drive, they'll also know what it's got. Pro, you can get into the car uh, with your key in the pocket and you just press the button on the handle. That's nice. Don't gotta dig for your key. Pro, you step inside and you got a reminder on the headrests that, that this is a high country. Look at that stitch. Nice. Looking down, making sure you don't hit your feet on the car, and pro! High country, there it is again. Oh yeah, you spent the money, so you are, you will be reminded. Sitting down, you can, oh, the seats are comfortable. And pro, they're heated and cooled. Cool. I've never had like a cooled seat, and it's just weird, it's like air conditioning going up your ass. Bro, the, you can see the car if it's unlocked or not from the outside uh, at a distance because 1990 Pro, the materials inside, they're nice. And the amount of buttons on the door, they make you feel like you're in command of an object that can do things for you, like several things. It's got a lot of buttons. Seriously though, uh, have they chosen to make the interior look pretty decent? It's got like a mix of all kinds of materials that'll likely create like a subconscious sedation that'll keep you feeling pretty good about buying the car. Uh, but it's got a whole lot of cheap plastic surrounding everything. But you know, that uh, leathery looking thing, the suede, and it's nice. It's like, what is that? Like a brushed metal around the buttons and the thing? And ooh, it's shiny, it's chrome. Pro, the rear hatch, it's automatic. And you can choose to have it open only three quarters of the way if that's your thing, you know, because you, you accidentally hit the roof of your garage with your last automatic car. My laundry's done. Now the car does not make sounds like that uh, because the things are done, but it's fine. But yeah, no, no hitting the garage door here. Con. Bird poop. Pro, the steering wheel has more buttons than the Apollo Lunar Landers, like the attitude controls, is that what they're called? Yeah. So take that, astronauts. Chevy. Pro, the Bose speakers, because Bose licensed Chevy, their sound equipment. Again, nice. Pro, the vacuum form plastic, I mentioned cheap plastic, it's got, it gives you options. And this pocket yields to gravity, so you can place junk in it, and it will possibly stay. Actually, it'll definitely stay, unless you slam on the brakes, because flooring this car doesn't do a whole lot. I just took my phone out of my pocket, and pro, wireless charging. But my phone doesn't have that, so I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna need that. Ooh, look at that. 12 volt outlet and USBs, couple USBs, nice. Pro, heating and AC, oh yeah, more buttons. There's two sides, and you can turn a knob, and numbers change, very nice. And the middle row, it's got adjustments too, look at that. And this is probably the biggest pro of the entire car. It's got a 120 volt outlet in that middle row. That's nice. Usually you gotta go to Walmart and spend like 40 bucks on a thing that you plug into the cigarette lighter that's up front in order to be able to do that. Oh my, what is this? Pro, 007 Pro, wow, look at that. This is James Bond stuff going on here. Chevy, this is super cool. And the first 007 Pro ever. Con, you cannot drive with the screen up. Pro, seat belts, that's good. And up top, there's uh, some more buttons. Ooh, there's trash stuck to that. Lights, that's fancy. <laughs> pro wish, no wait, that's not a pro. Seriously though, the sunroof thing with the buttons, it's weird, it's too many, it's, it's not intuitive. Like there's an open and tilt button, it's really weird. This though, pro. You can stop using the mirror to look at the reflection on the mirror and then use it just as like a monitor because it's got a TV built into it to look through the back cameras or at least one of them. There's a couple back cameras there, by the way. It's got like a cleaning thing so you can clean them off. That's I guess that's a pro. Anyway, yeah, it's, the screen on the mirror is kind of a low quality resolution, but it's very handy and it works well at night too. And the, uh, the lower, like it's not HD, but the resolution really doesn't matter. It, it does what it's supposed to. Yeah, and I actually, yep, I like that. Pro, the surround view, look at that. You can look around a car and check it out. There's tires. <laughs> you can turn the wheel and see the tires and they don't look normal. It, it looks like a cartoon. Yeah, and if you're bored, you can fold the mirrors and mess around with the surround view. Yeah? 
You see that? It looks, yeah, it's weird. Backup camera, and there's a forward facing camera you can like select, and you can even drive slowly with them all on, but then it shuts off after you like you've been moving for a little bit because con. Pro big center console storage, definitely a good place to put a bunch of junk if you got a bunch of junk. Hi, country. Even though the seat has a bunch of cheap plastic around it, you can move like it can go several directions with the press of a button or sliding of a thing, even though those might break because that's what buttons do sometimes. All right, so though the car looks different on the outside, it's like fancy, it's big, it's shiny. I'm not gonna let what it's made of go unseen. Look at this hinge. That's a door hinge for one of the back doors. Is that, does that look like it goes to a burly car? Hmm. Ooh, let's look at the suspension. This struts suspension up front. Is that as beefy as you think it should be for a large vehicle? This looks like minivan quality. Like not off-road vehicle quality to me. Definitely easy to work on though. That's, that's cool. Oh, and the, the rear differential. Let's look at the back. Huh, look at that. It reminds me of, uh, hmm. oh yeah, 1990 Toyota Privia Alltrack. Not bad, Chevy's finally catching up. Pro, Apple and Android, they get, they can do stuff. They got the, uh, yep. Wild pigs outside of the Kennedy Space Center? What? This place is weird. Pro, the headlights look really cool. They got these like crystal looking things that appear to belong in like a time machine's warp drive or something. And they, they work well at night. You can see, it's pretty clear. Oh man, look at this grill. I just want to chuck a burger on it. Start cooking a burger. Now, if you're like me and you drive and are constantly using a protractor and a laser level, then this screen is just for you. Pro. You can see what degree you're headed at, like with the turning, and then how much you're tilted, like side to side or up and down, because math. Pro, Chevy's computer lets you look at numbers on the, the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is easy to read too, that's a pro, but yeah. Miles per gallon. Hmm. Keep in mind, if you drive 200 miles a week, you'll be putting about 60 or 70 pounds of gas from your tank into the air that you and I breathe. So yeah, that's a con. Yeah, hmm. Uh, if you plan to drive 100,000 miles in this car, you'll be placing around 33,000 pounds of fuel into the atmosphere. Like that's several tons of fuel. Have you ever tried lifting a ton? This Traverse gives us the option of lifting several tons of fuel into the atmosphere because exhaust waste. It's what we do, we want to do. We've got, is that, wait a minute. What? Chevy. Con, this thing is gutless. When you floor it, it definitely makes noise. So check it out. Okay. You will arrive at your destination on the right hand side after three yeah, months. It's not that fast. I mean, it's loud. It wants to go fast. It's got only like 220 miles on it, but yeah. It'll, it'll get you where you need to go. I would, I would bet. So imagine like a dude with a wheelbarrow full of dirt. He's just screaming at, at like a constant note, like, Brah! he's just screaming. And then he's putting an incredible amount of effort into pushing the wheelbarrow, but it just doesn't appear to be going faster. That's kind of like what it's like to drive this thing with your foot in the floor on, on the throttle. Yep, I guess. Pro, I guess this is a pro, it's a nine speed automatic, so you got several choices to be slow. You got nine specific choices to be slow. So yeah, the, it just makes you wait. Like you put your foot down and it's like, oh wait, oh you want something? Okay, Blah! and then just start yelling and then you're like, okay, almost the speed limit. That it, oh, now we're gonna slightly go over the speed limit here, watch out. <laughs> hmm. It does stop though when you press on the brakes, so that's good, that's a pro. Uh, let's go to night mode. Let's do that. Interior lighting's pretty good. It's really clear. Uh, LED lights all around. That's nice. The visors, they're also well lit. And the projected logo on the ground is pretty cool. You step on it and the automatic uh, door will open if you got the key. It, it doesn't happen every time, but it, it does work. And uh, yeah, the automatic folding rear seats, those are nice. You press a button and the seats go up or down. It's really cool. It's, it's really handy. I've never had that in a car. Seriously though, if you're car shopping, you know you're probably gonna make a really big decision. And if you buy this beast, you may like it. It is really fancy. It's got lots of features uh, that weren't normal like five or 10 years ago. But what about gas? Like, do you like having to buy gas? I don't know. If you drive 12,000 miles a year at 250 a gallon, you'll be spending about $1,500 a year on fuel with this. Uh, 
and you'll be placing about 3,900 pounds of fuel into the air. Uh, I've done that for a lot of years, and my wife and I recently have changed that habit. Yeah, because we don't like breathing trash. We don't like putting waste into the atmosphere that we're going to breathe, and not to mention all the fuel used to, like, make and transport the fuel to get it to the gas station where you buy it from. Like, there's so much waste. So, yeah, you've got a choice to go a different route. Uh... Yeah, the same amount of miles in an electric car well, is going to be maybe $500 uh, or, yeah, or less. And uh, if you drive a lot, then you're going to save more money. Like, that's a third of the cost. Yeah, and then if you charge on, like, off-peak rates, you could save even more money. Electric vehicles, they're not perfect, and they can be fueled by dirty sources. Uh, but all things considered, they're far cleaner than normal gas cars when it comes to trashing the air. If you're a Chevy loyalist... Uh, you can buy uh, the fully electric Chevy Bolt, and it's definitely not the size of a Traverse, uh, but it can go 230 miles and, and seat five people. I don't know. It's kind of small. I, I own a 2016 Chevy Spark EV. Here it is. Look at that. And it's super fun. Uh, it's fast. It's quiet. It gets me to work and back really easy. Nearly all of its braking and all of any electric vehicle's braking uh, is regenerative, so... What that means is that when you slow down, the car, like, captures energy, puts it back in the battery. So that's pretty cool. And yeah, this Chevy Traverse, it's nice when it comes to, like, roominess on the inside and all, but don't be fooled by the facade that the car offers. It's an incredibly complex piece of machinery with an enormous amount of moving parts that may end up costing you a lot of money in the long term to, like, repair or maintain. If this car is comfortably in your budget, consider going to tesla.com used. My wife and I did. We bought a car from Tesla in October 2018. And though the company is going through some serious growing pains right now, and my experience wasn't perfect, my wife and I absolutely love the car. And you can get a used Tesla on their website for the same price as this Traverse or less or a little more. And in many cases, uh, there's a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty on the cars too. And they're clean and they're sleek and they're incredibly useful. And the power they provide is hilarious. And, and some of these Model S even have seven seats. Uh, so you have the power to choose. If you want the Chevy Traverse, that's great. But if you're done burning gas, or you're tired of burning gas, maybe consider an electric vehicle. I hope that helped. See you later, Internet.